Well, welcome. My name is Mark Goldstein. I am CEO and President of Entertainment Partners, and I'm here socially distancing with uh, Melissa Littinger, Senior Vice President of Production Finance at NBC Universal Television Group. And we're excited today to talk about return to production. And um, now that production is back up and running, we're um, excited to focus on episodic television today. And Thank you again for uh, for coming here with us today. Thank you for having me and letting me get dressed up and out of the house. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's first time in eight months. Well, it's nice to see you here first time in eight months. So thinking about um, how COVID has impacted the entertainment industry, what is the biggest change in how you do your job today? The hardest part is there are things you really can't plan for. You could have every contingency plan and you could still shut down. Um, there might be situations where you can't deliver your episodes, which is unheard of. So I think for production in general, it's really hard just to to come to terms with certain things are out of your control. Also, from a corporate standpoint, I think everyone is used to being, you know, being in finance, we are able to plan and predict and do a, a pacing. And, and now we have plans and then we throw them out of the window and we say, well, we have this plan. Oh, something changed. So at the beginning of COVID and you guys started creating strategy about how you're going to manage production in a safe way, like how is your, what's your strategy been and how do you feel that's been different than uh, than some of the other studios. At NBC Universal, we, we got in pretty aggressively. Some shows were able to stay up. We first said, what shows can stay? So the late night shows stayed in production. We had reality shows. Um, any shows we could, we would keep them up. And then we tried to plan for scripted. So from the beginning, even before we had the return to work protocols that the guilds put together, NBC had their own protocols. And they are stricter, I'd say, than what is required mm -hmm. because the safety is always the number one concern at the studio the same way we can't have a certain you know too much overtime so these practices are kind of built on the philosophy of the studio and i think that's how we've been able to have now 30 something productions back up and running you know uh -huh. things happen but we are cautious but we're also optimistic and you know we're just trying our best to work through it so when you when you think about the plans that you made mm -hmm. and now that you're actually have 30 shows in production what has worked out well in the plans and what's been different and surprised you now that you're back in production? Sure. One thing we're finding, we added some extra days to the schedule, but we're finding is we're actually, that's not quite as bad as we thought it was going to be. So that was a little bit better. I think the testing has been a challenge, though it's gotten a lot smoother since, you know, probably in the last couple of months after we've had to change, you know, because there's rapid tests there are the lab tests, which we need to have. And you know how it is sometimes the test results can be not the same depending on the type of test. Yeah, we're um, talking to all the studios and independent production companies. The biggest issue we're hearing right now is the testing, mm -hmm. the quality of the testing, the turnaround time of the testing. But you are seeing positive trends and it feels like it's starting to create yeah. more of a normal, normal it does. process. It does. You know, I think one thing about the testing that's uh, better than we thought, you know, you can have because of the way we have the pods and the wristbands and you isolate groups and we mm -hmm. have social distancing and masks. Just because you have a positive COVID test doesn't mean you need to necessarily shut down. It's who has it, right? And and you can switch out crew. Sometimes we have backup crew, but obviously if anyone on the cast tests positive in that, that precious zone that can't wear a mask, that's what causes these kind of two week shutdowns that mm -hmm. we've seen across the industry. So when you talked about, um, you know, it was really hard to shut down shows, yes. um, but then you went into planning to bring back shows. So what happened in the planning um, with the writer's room and, and the scripts? Like, did you have to make changes to oh, the yeah. scripts in order to, you know, have everyone feel safe on the set? Like, what was that process like we, in the thinking around it? We did. I mean, we had to pivot. You know, in the beginning, we were like, this is great. In the planning phase, we're like, writer's room. You could do that, virtual Zoom writer, writer's rooms. Well, it's really interesting, like many things in our industry, even though you can do it, it may not be the best, right? We were finding that it's hard for them too to be in different places. I'm sure there was a lot of chemistry in those writer's room and that's kind of missing, but we immediately, they started writing scripts. We came up with a show called Connecting that was made for, you know, for social mm -hmm. distancing times. We also had a couple of those specials that we brought back um, for reunions. I would say, just talking from the finance perspective, when we shut down, I felt like finance was in the hot seat because we had to figure out, well, how much did we pay? You know, how much should we pay the writers? What mm -hmm. episode were they on? We had a lot of analysis and we worked through that throughout. I would say now that we're up and running, the harder part is for the production folks because every show was, would have a COVID safety plan. Mm -hmm. And I'd say now production management is a little more in the hot seat. Mm -hmm. Getting back up, I feel like it went from where finance had the most uh, yeah. harrowing job. Now, I now think, it's moved over. Now it's production first. management. So we kind of look back and go, yeah, that's tough. Only because you get those calls at 3 a.m. and the test didn't come back or the tests are positive. Yeah. So that's, it's just, 
become more consuming than ever. Well, it's been production. really fascinating. I mean, it's been great. A lot of shows are coming back, but we yeah. heard a lot about the writers changing the scripts so people were social distancing in, this, in the script, but mm -hmm. that they were coordinating with the director around the camera angles. And so we were actually, my wife and I were watching a show oh. the other day and you could see the social distancing, you could see the mask, they took off their mask, mm -hmm. but you could see that the camera angles were angled in a way that looked like the characters were close, but actually they were six or, to nine feet away, which yeah, is really fascinating, the thought process that went oh, into Oh yeah, that. I think everyone's been trying to write, you know, it's, I think it depends on the show because we, that's what we said immediately. Everyone just write for COVID and you could, but some shows are, are more complicated. It's easier for, you know, the shows that are, um, you know, on the set, on the stage versus mm -hmm. location. It's really hard to do location. Some of the shows are not meant to be, right. you know, on the stage. So I think that's the hard part. But shows like Superstore doing very well. Chicago Fire on location. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, you got to have that. It's hard to have Chicago Fire without the fires. Mm -hmm. So we talked a lot about the planning that you guys have done at the studio and how there was a, you know, a lot of effort on the production finance side and you know, a little bit earlier in the game on the planning and now physical production is, kind of in the hot seat, but how is it going for the crew? Like, how are they doing with all these changes and how's their attitude through this whole process? Our crews are doing great. I mean, it's pretty amazing that we've got all of our shows up and running. Our crews are, are getting through it. I would say that it's difficult, right? It's challenging and it's stressful because our crews are very seasoned. They have so much experience and they're used to producing a certain way, right? And now with all of these constraints and new variables, I think it's been a challenge, but I think Everyone's doing really well. What's the biggest change for some of the roles, like makeup and the camera crew? Like, what what's different for them? Well, I think everything is really different. I mean, hey, look, they can't even get breakfast on the lot. <laughs> 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 no, honestly, I thought that was, people are okay with that. Like, people are living with it. But we used to have catered. Now it's like show up, eat. You know, with your having eaten. We have the lunches. Is you know, you have your lunches mm. a boxed lunch. We used mm. to have great catered meals. I mean, anyone who's been on a set knows what do people do? Hurry up and wait. The, the socializing as, aspect, but now it's like you have to stay apart, you have to have your mask. Mm -hmm. the, one of the good things about this the way we have to work now, it's not as fun in some respects, right? Mm -hmm. So we're finding that like maybe you can get done faster because it's not like you need to hang out or people aren't in the production office, so things like that. So how's work-life balance been for the crew? I mean, we've been in a world, production world, where it's intense hours, long yeah. days like how does that long change days. the days are shorter so yeah. i think people like i'm saying people get home um we don't have the long days but maybe it's because right right now we have built in some extra days in the schedule so mm -hmm. we'll see once we get outside on location and we start to have the days cut back we'll have to see if they're longer they won't be super long because we really don't allow super long days but it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out so you're seeing less hours, less hours. potentially more shooting days mm -hmm. to get the script done. Do you think this is something that will permanently change the industry or do you think? I don't think so. Not when we can get back to normal. Yeah. I think that it's a little inefficient right now. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to, we don't want to build in those higher costs yeah. for sure. So a lot, a lot of industries um, are learning a lot about the work from home and mm -hmm. we're seeing changes in, in how companies are thinking about working. So what permanent changes do you think will happen in terms of how the production office works, how your department works? I think that it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis because we've definitely learned, we have some shows right now that the accounting teams, for example, they go in, they're staggered and social distance and they had to put up uh, you know, little dividers and, and retrofit the offices. Some of them, it hasn't changed that much. Then we have other accounting teams that are working from a whole different city. And I think that's the opportunity. And I think a lot of us have seen that just in, in corporate life that you're not really bound by geography, right? One exciting thing, one of our shows, we have a writer, a global writer's room. So this would have never happened before. You have a writer in London, a writer in LA, all these different writers together because you can't be in the same room. Everyone can be in the same Zoom. So I think that's been, uh, that's kind of positive. We found with location scouting, even though you, someone has to go out there, not everyone has to go. So now we're doing kind of these virtual location scouting. I think that could stay. I think casting works. Um, like, so there's certain areas in departments that now we know it can be done, even though people probably never thought it could be done. So there may be some changes, but I know there are also other people that really want to get back to the way it used to be. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how much of this really sticks permanently. So how about the production office? So that everyone's working remotely on the production office. Almost, um, not so, everyone, but yeah, a but lot But most of people. So mm -hmm. does the production office, you know, do you rethink on what the production office looks like? And Yeah, maybe it's just who needs to be there, right? Yeah. That would be nice because, uh, you know, right now, 
you have to have extra space because of holding area and you know more tents for lunch and catering. Mm -hmm. But the production office is one area where they even set, encouraging those that don't need to go into the production office don't go in. So it might be interesting to see if there are smaller production office. I think less paper for sure. Is that the biggest change in the production office? Is that there's a lot more um, digital technology tools and it's making them more efficient? Mm -hmm. Like, more how's digital. that been for you guys? It's been great. Well, as you know, we were well into the digital workflows and technology for, um, I guess, a couple of years now. So we were really fortunate that we were a little bit ahead of the game. So when COVID struck, it was like, oh, okay, we've got this. We have our digital workflows for invoices and we use SmartStart for the onboarding. And we had, you know, I think 80,000 crew members have already used it. So that really helped us when we got into this world. You have a lot of priorities, but where does um, digitizing the production office rank in those priorities? Number one. It's, <laughs> you, it's been my number one probably for years now, even before COVID. As far as crews, we mandated a couple of years ago that they onboard through Smart Start, um, and that's your digital workflow, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's been really great. And I think in the beginning, everyone thought, I remember probably five to 10 years ago, they would say, crews will never do it. Crews will never do it. They would only use their, you know, the triplicate start forms and paperwork. And now we see once people use it and it works very well, they love it and they just gravitate towards it and, and they, they prefer it. What were, so. what were some of the more challenging issues on, on getting the crew to adopt the technology? And most important part is the technology has to work. I think that over the years, you know, sometimes you give somebody something, if it doesn't work, it has to work, right? Mm -hmm. And the training is key. You get comfortable. We got comfortable with so many shows that have used certain products and we're like, oh yeah, these work great. Then all of a sudden it doesn't work. And we said, well, why doesn't it work on that show? What happens is they didn't have that kind of personal touch and training where somebody sat down and said, oh, you're going to get this in your email. You have to respond to it because in production, you used to get a stack of papers. People, they're used to that. They see when they're done. Now it's like, oh, you have to look at your phone because you might get things to approve. If they just sit in your phone, you could miss deadlines. So it's, it really takes some training. So what, what advice would you give to studios, production companies, producers? What advice would you give them about um, going from the paper environment to a digital? I would say give a lot of support, a lot of communication. And, you know, I would just say it works. You know what I mean? 80,000 crew can't be wrong. You know, we say the same thing. We're trying to get above the line. That's a challenge too, but we've had some high level talent go into systems where they always said, oh no, it has to go to the agent. Well, now we have to find a way that the agent can get something, but the individual talent and above the line could also get it. How are you managing um, embracing adoption? Are you requiring people to use it? Are we you did. having freelancers have the choice? Like I always bring up SmartStart because that's something we mandated. We, man we didn't mandate it though. We let everyone, my philosophy with technology is not to force it on people. Mm -hmm. So I know um, even when I started NBC four years ago, we sat down and there were some certain things people wanted to use and others didn't. So we said, okay, you go ahead, you use it. You have those early adopters. When they have success, they just talk about how good it is. And then I, I had somebody on my team like eight months in, they're like, how come we're not using that? I said, oh, you didn't want to. And they felt left out. So I like to have people want it. But then by the time you get so such widespread adoption, that's when you can mandate it. So now that you're in production, what are some of your most pressing issues? Well, right now, we're really concerned about this whole surge in positive cases of the virus. Obviously, that is top of mind because we were getting our groove. Now, of course, we're really in it with a lot of our shows. We're also obviously concerned about when will we have a vaccine and be able to kind of get back to some semblance of normalcy in 21. You know, I think that's top of mind right now. I think it's always trying to pivot. I mean, once we went all in on production, you know how it is, there's so many costs that need to be amortized. If we start, you know, shortening our episode counts, it's going to really drastically mm -hmm. affect the profitability of our shows. So I think that's kind of what kind of really concerns us right now. Like, where are we, you know, every day you're holding your breath because you're like, wow, 30 shows are still in production. We've had cases, we haven't shut down. We've shut down a few shows, but for not a long time. So we know, you know, the third wave is here and there's surging everywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. But the industry has been so thoughtful in terms of the return to production and the safety protocols. Do you think the government will shut down the industry? I don't think so. Because we shut ourselves down, right? When anything mm -hmm. happens, I think because it's such a self-regulated business, I don't think we'll get shut down. And I heard something today that I think in every country, television film is considered an essential service. And I think it goes back to that. Those protocols that we have, I was reading in the New York Times today that some companies, one thing they're not doing testing, it's too expensive, it's, it's not easy to do. I think 15% of companies actually do testing. So we couldn't even get back to work without the testing and the protocols and the extra sanitation, you know, cleaning of everything. So I think at this point, there's a lot of faith in the industry. 
Yeah, and it's, it's uh, we saw some best practice in London, mm -hmm. right, where they shut down in all of London, but yet they allowed production to continue because of the protocols. And we're hearing from all the studios that everyone's building a lot of confidence. Yeah. Have you had shutdowns and we, how's that worked out for you guys? We have had shutdowns like for two weeks on three of our productions. It's been in deadline, so it's not a secret. But we have right. three of them. And um, yeah, unfortunately, we had to shut down for a couple of weeks, but then we got right back up. And like I said, we've had other cases where you don't have to shut down. So I think there really are, I mean, super cautious. I mean, we always say, Sometimes we, sh we shut down when we go, mm, they really weren't around anyone, but it's always out of the abundance of caution. So I think because most productions are so conservative, because at the end of the day, it's everyone's health and safety, and it's all about everyone, you know, surviving this pandemic. And that's the number one priority. And I think that's why the governments are, are feeling confident, you know, because it's really strict. Yeah. Well, you, you uh, talked a lot about the work that you did around um, budgeting, and it's no secret that the costs are going up from PPE and testing. How's that? How's your budget's been impacted? Yeah, our budgets are going up. Yes. And it really varies. It depends on the show. I mean, it can be 10 percent. It could be more. It depends on what kind of production. If you could if you have more stage days, like if you have a lot of extras, or a lot of people, obviously, with social distancing, you're going to have to double the number of tents you get. And I mean, what happens is we get all of our budgets across all of our shows and all of our portfolio. We roll it up to corporate and people went, whoa, look how much this is. So then you go back and iterate, you know, so that's why we end up doing a lot of budgets. As well. So did you did you find that you're adding a lot more contingencies? But we don't really have built in contingencies. We had those extra days that we hope will get mm -hmm. better. But, you know, it's always a learning experience. So we're a couple months in. So we're, we're hoping things are looking good, but it's always a knock on wood situation, right? Because I think everyone's afraid to say, it looks like it's going well, but when you have to go down for a couple of weeks, how many shutdowns can you have on a production before it doesn't make sense? So how has your budgeting process changed the last seven months and how many more budgets are you doing for a show compared to pre-COVID? Budgeting. All we do is budget. What do you think? <laughs> we always did a lot of budgeting, I would say, and it does, it is situational, but with COVID, there's the additional COVID budget. So we kind of build it in, but a lot of times we do a separate COVID budget. So right there, it's kind of doubled the number of budgets. And mm -hmm. then what happens is we create all these budgets, then we consolidate, look across all of our shows and we say, wow. Then we go back and see, well, how can we cut in different areas? So it's definitely increased the iterations. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different for every show, so I don't want to get into exactly how much, but it's, it's quite a bit. Through all of this, and trying to think of the positivity that we're going to come out of this, what, what are some of the silver linings? When I think about silver linings, right, I think of this industry that's, you know, 100 years old, you know, and uh, over 100 years old, and how things have always been the same, and we've tried to change, and we have made some incremental change. I think right what it showed people was that, hey, we can do something people didn't ever think would be possible. And I think that's a really exciting possibility for production because there's just so much change. I think another thing, silver lining, is just everyone really coming together, working together, um, even closer than before, doing things we never thought possible. Yeah. If everyone said, oh, yeah, you'd have to do this and no one could be in the same space and you'd have to figure it out and work remotely. I don't think we'd ever think that would be possible. I, I agree. And I think, you know, it's been um, great for all of us is just a recommitment or affirmation about the need for content. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, when content was taken away um, and now that it's been a long time is like we're constantly hearing a demand for more content. And so it's yeah. kind of reinforcing the momentum we had in the first quarter and the last yeah. couple of years. Yeah, really I think the thing. streaming, right? I mean, that's the silver lining. It's kind of cuts both ways. We knew that's where the industry was headed, but I think look how streaming's doing so well. People being home, people are you know looking for that entertainment, so. Yeah. So if you're looking to the crystal ball, what <laughs> is in store for us in the future? It's gonna be more consolidation. I mean, you look at our industry, I think there's gonna be more content. I think it's gonna be more more focused. I think it's going to be streaming more non-linear, even though it's been going in that direction. I think it's going to be more of that. But I do think it's also going to be a time of innovation because when we come out of this, having looked at different ways of producing and different types of storytelling, I think it could, it could help drive some real interesting ideas and storytelling. Physical production could do well, and I think create, creation and creativity will thrive. Well, that's a great perspective because as we enter 2021 with a lot of optimism and hope and, you know, um, seeing us a tremendous demand for content and seeing, like you said, technology innovation, it's um, going to be really exciting for all of us in the industry uh, going forward. So, Melissa, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your views and perspectives on return to production and uh, 
We'll look forward to a great 2021. All right. Thanks so much, Mark, for having me.